Gustav Kirchhoff has two circuit laws to his name, one the current, the other the voltage. Uh, here we'll just be looking at the, circuit, uh, the current law and how in reality it's little more than a consequence of the conservation of charge. Uh, so within the world of physics there are a number of conserved quantities. One you'll have been familiar with already, that is the conservation of energy. So we say that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, we say it can only be moved around a little bit. Uh, another one is actually charge. So charge, uh, the property of charge on particles cannot be created or destroyed. Uh, we can simply move it around a bit, usually in the form of electrons or uh, charged ions in some electrolyte. There's a number, number of other quantities which are also conserved, uh, but charge is the one that we're looking at today. Um, so let's have a look at a wire. So let's imagine a junction in some circuit. So we've got some wire coming in, we have a little junction here, and coming out we have two more wires. So the wire is splitting, we have some current coming in, and then coming out we have the current going off to some other places. So let's imagine that coming in we've got uh, one amp of current. And then let's suggest, just picking some numbers out of thin air, we have 0.75 amps coming out here and 0.75 amps coming out of here. Uh, so what this would lead to is, uh, let's see what happens to the charge. So let's imagine we let this run for one second. In one second, we are putting in one coulomb of charge. So charge is current times time. One amp for one second gives us one coulomb. So we're putting in one coulomb. And in that one second, we are taking out 0.75 coulombs plus another 0.75 coulombs. Which means we're taking out a total of 1.5 Coulombs. So if we have a look at this and compare it against the conservation of charge, we can see this can't quite be right. So we're putting in 1 coulomb and we've got out 1.5 coulombs. So somewhere out of thin air we have plucked an extra half coulomb. So we've created charge from somewhere, which violates the conservation of charge. So clearly this can't be right. Instead, uh, we can see from this that what must happen is that the amount of current coming out must be the same as the current going in. So if we clear this off and have a go at a slightly different example, we have again a wire coming in, we have some junction and it's splitting off. And this time let's say we've measured the uh, current coming in as being uh, one amp again and using an ammeter we've measured that the current coming off of uh, this wire coming out of the junction along this wire is again 0.75 amps means that we can see from this in order for the total current coming out of the circuit to be the same uh, out of the junction to be the same as the total current flowing into the junction there must be 0.25 amps flowing out of this leg Similarly, if we switch this about, so rather than having 0.75 amps coming out of here, if we instead had this flowing into this junction, so we've got one amp flowing into it uh, plus another 0.5 amps, then coming out of this leg for the total entering to equal the total leaving, we must have 1.75 amps. And this is Kirchhoff's law. He simply states that at some junction in an electrical circuit, the total current flowing into that circuit must be exactly equal to the total current flowing out of that circuit. And here we have a little example where we can explore this and use it to see how we can uh, determine the amount of current flowing in various legs of a circuit. So the question we're posed with is determine the current passing through each of the resistors below and the direction of the current in the central resistor. So we've got a couple of resistors here. 
we're told we've got 5 amps coming in, we have a branch in here, 2 amps passes through this one, 3 through this one, 1 through here, and we've got a little network and it eventually comes out here through another resistor. And we need to work out for this central resistor, is the current flowing from top to bottom, or are we flowing from bottom to top? And similarly, these three unlabeled resistors we need to determine the total current flowing through them. And we can do that just using this Kirchhoff's first law. So we've got one junction here. And we can see we've got 5 amps flowing in, plus 2 amps flowing up here. So that must mean that for the total entering to equal the total leaving, then down through this leg, we must have the other 3 amps. At uh, this point here, we can see we've got 2 amps flowing in. And then we know we've got 1 amp here, which is either flowing away or towards this junction, and 3 amps here, which again could be either flowing towards or away from the junction. So let's see what happens if we have this 3 amps flowing towards the junction. That would mean that uh, we have 2 amps flowing in here and 3 amps flowing in here, which should mean we would have 5 amps flowing down here. Instead, we can see this has been read as a single amp. So this must be 3 amps flowing away instead. And so we can see if we've got 3 amps flowing out there and 2 amps coming in here, then we need an extra 1 amp coming in somewhere. And so that's this 1 amp here, so this must be flowing up here. Now we can have a look at this junction. So we know we've got the 3 amps coming in here, and then 1 amp flowing up here, which leaves the 2 amps to come out here. Which just leaves this final junction where we've got 3 amps coming in and 2 amps coming in, which means we'll have 5 amps coming out there. And this one should have been obvious from the start. We can see we've only got one wire coming into this network and a single wire coming out of the network, so whatever current was passing through here, regardless of what it did in this centre bit, must be the same as the current coming out of this end of the network. So 5 amps in, 5 amps out, we could have done that straight away. So as you can see, Kirchhoff's first law, or Kirchhoff's current law, is fairly straightforward. By conserving charge, we can see that the current entering a junction must be exactly the same as the current leaving the junction, and we can use that to determine the flow of current around simple circuits.